Ya Mustafa the chosen one sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ya Mustafa the chosen one sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala sayyidil anbiya wal mursaleen Amma ba'd fa'a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim my dear respected viewers of Mother Nation, we once again welcome you in our program, Al Mustafa, the Chosen One. Inshallah, today we'll be talking about the sight of Mustafa, sallallahu ta'ala, alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim. Inshallah, azza wa jal. Respected viewers of Mother Nation, before we proceed towards our topic of the day, let's make few good intentions. My Shaykh Tariqat, Amir of Ahl Sunnah, Hazrat Allama, Maulana, Muhammad, Ilyas, Attar, Qadri. Damat Barakatuhul Aliyah gives us a beautiful mindset that we should never forget to make good intentions before we perform any permissible task or any good deed. So, Alhamdulillah, uh, as we are delivering this program, I make this intention that I will deliver this program for the pleasure of Allah Ta'ala. Wa ta you shall make this intention, you will listen from start to end, you'll remember what you learn, act upon and pass this knowledge on to others to insha'Allah Azza wa Remember, the more intentions one makes, the higher the reward he can attain. So as many good intentions as possible, you can make insha'Allah, you will be rewarded accordingly. Respect to of Madhim Shalim, as I said today, insha'Allah, we'll be talking about the sight of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim. We've got our brother Wasim Abbas with us today, insha'Allah, Zubudin. We will also include his Madhim pearls with, with regards to this beautiful topic, insha'Allah. Let's go towards him. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Wasim Abbas Bay, mashallah. How are you doing? You okay? Alhamdulillahi ala kulli hal. Mahaba, welcome once again in our program. Wasim Bay, mashallah. As you know, today we will be talking about sight of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sabbat. How beautifully Allah Zat Shah Imam Muhammad Raza Khan Amir Ahmad Rahman describes the sight of Mustafa. Kis ko dekha ye Musa se puche koi aankh walon ki himmat pe lakhon salam. Inshallah we will elaborate on this further. But first of all from uh, the teachings of Islam from Quran, from Ahadith, from narrations of Mustafa Kareem alayhi salatu salam. We should establish the fact that what sort of sight our beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallama possesses and what uh, great uh, eyesight was granted to Mustafa Kareem alayhi salatu wa salam. First of all, what would you like to share with viewers of Padre Nishan? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. When you're talking about the blessed sight of the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, first we need to establish the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the human and to the human Allah Almighty gave the power, the capability of witnessing, observing, seeing the ex external universal things which are in front of him, which, which are before him. So a man can see something which is in front of him. This is the sight of a person, human being. all those things which are apparent. But when it comes to the sight, the uh, insight or the wisdom of a mu'min, of a believer, that is distinguished from ordinary humans. For this the Holy Prophet ﷺ himself has said that fear the insight, the wisdom, the foresightedness of a believer because he see from the nur of Allah Almighty, from the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when this is the state of the foresightedness of a believer, an ordinary believer we're talking about, that he sees through the uh, nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then one can imagine the extent and heights of the, um, the vision, the sight of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. That a believer is seeing through the nur of Allah Almighty, then what would be the, the, the extent of the uh, sight, uh, foresightedness of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And it is beyond a human being to judge the, uh, to judge the level of um, the extent which has been given to the Prophet ﷺ because the, the level of um, the wisdom and foresightedness that is bestowed upon the Prophet ﷺ, it is beyond uh, the imagination of 
a human intellect, a person cannot uh, comprehend that. So the beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam for him, it was uh, possible for him. Allah Almighty gave him the power, and it was uh, entirely po possible for him to see even in the darkness of the night, even behind him, even those things which are hidden from ordinary human being. Inshallah, there are many uh, narrations in this regard where we will come to know that those uh, scenes and those things which are uh, impossible for an ordinary uh, person, ordinary human being to witness, all those were also possible for the Holy Prophet والسلام, to witness them. And it also um, makes us realize that the sight of the Prophet والسلام, is the most superior in the entire creation, which is blessed, uh, bestowed upon him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, beautiful start. The single last way, when we talk about the sight of Mustafa Kareem alayhi salatu wasalam. So first of all, you should know who has granted this, this power of seeing to Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is all powerful. He can grant to powers to uh, whoever, whoever he wishes. And subhanallah, when it comes, as you said, in normal believers, foresightedness, uh, which has been uh, talked about in hadith, right? We should have fear about that even subhanallah because he sees from the nur of allah wa so there's no comparison between Indeed. a normal believer and then prophets and then the leader of all the prophets mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam when we talk about the sight of mustafa uh, it has been mentioned in the books that rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam's eyesight was such powerful eyesight his vision was such that he was equally able to see from front from back, from top, from bottom, like from all directions, he was able to see equally. Subhanallah, this was the power of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam. Even in the light, even in the dark, there was no distinction or problem whatsoever to see anything by Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And this is backed by a hadith of Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. One hadith I would like to quote, inshallah, then I'll come back to you. There is one hadith in Muslim Sharif. That is one of the most authentic books of a hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has been reported to have said it is in Muslim Sharif, hadith 957. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala's Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, By Allah, I see behind me as I see in front of me. Subhanallah. So Subhan this is the sight of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala had granted him such a power that in dark, in light, at front, at back, from right or left, top or bottom, 360 degree, you can say, it was possible for Mustafa Kareem alayhi salatu wa salam to see and it was the vision of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. You know, when you talk about sighting, there are certain conditions that are required for a person to observe something, to see something. Um, light is one of them. Something being in front of you is one of them. Yeah. So these are those norms for ordinary human beings. But when we talk about the Holy Prophet, والسلام, whether it is the blessed sight of the Prophet, whether it is any uh, other uh, attribute we're talking about, the norms of ordinary human beings do not apply to the Holy Prophet وسلم, because he is not ordinary. He is the chosen one. He is Al-Mustafa, the chosen one, the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another hadith before me, alhamdulillah, as you mentioned uh, from Muslim Sharif, the, this hadith is from Bukhari, which Imam Bukhari has mentioned, where the Holy Prophet has said, that do you think that I only see in front of me? Allah. By Allah, neither is your humility and humbleness hidden from me, nor is your ruku hidden from me. Undoubtedly, I see behind me the way I see in front of me. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So this hadith, the beloved Prophet والسلام, which he mentioned is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari. So again in this hadith, uh, we are being uh, told by the Prophet والسلام, himself the extent and the power of his seeing. And in the commentary of this hadith, uh, Allama Badruddin Aini Rahmatullahi Ta'ala has mentioned that majority of the scholars what their opinion regarding this hadith is, and this is also the authentic opinion that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam seeing behind him, which is against the norms, 
This is a, uh, this is a most specialities which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. And this is the reason why Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi ta'ala has mentioned this hadith in the chapter of the signs of uh, the Prophet in Bukhari Allah. Sharif. Subhanahu. So Imam Bukhari rahma has chosen this hadith to mention it in the chapter of the signs of the prophethood. And the Tabi'i Buzurg, Sayyidina Mujahid rahmatullahi ta'ala, he has mentioned that the Prophet, these, uh, the, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, seeing behind his back is not only specific for Salah, but it is for all the times. This speciality, this power granted to the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, is not only specific within the Salah, because in this hadith, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, is mentioning that your khushu, your humility, uh, submissiveness and humbleness, and your ruku are not uh, hidden from me. So uh, one may think that this is specific to um, to the Prophet ﷺ when he's offering salah. But Imam Mujahid rahmatullahi ta'ala who is a tabi'i saint, he <coughs> is elaborating on this hadith that this was not specific only within salah, but this was a, speci a speciality of the Prophet ﷺ at all times. Wasim Rasbi, one thing I would like to just talk about here, that there are some viewers of Madani Shal, they would be thinking, how is it possible? Intellect doesn't understand. We can't see from our back. We can't see clearly from right and left and up and down at the same time. How is it possible Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam was able to do? Simple and straightforward answer is it is miracle of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And mu'ajizat when you talk about miracles of prophets that you do not judge them just merely based on your own intellect and your mind. Sometimes your mind cannot comprehend them. Right. So, first of all, you need to understand this was the miracle of Mustafa and it was the speciality of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And another important bit, one should understand that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is all powerful. Indeed. He is qadir mutlaq. He can grant anyone any power he wishes. And subhanallah, uh, th when you talk about miracles, uh, to grant miracles to his beloveds, Right, to the prophets, then the most uh, miracles which were granted and given to, they were to Mustafa Karim alayhi salatu wasalam. And a special and you see unique eyesight was also one of those beautiful miracles which were granted to Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. But if we talk about, first of all, if any doubt or misunderstanding comes in our mind that how was it possible, so straightforward, simple answer is it was a miracle of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. But having said this, we should also understand the fact who gives miracles, who has granted miracles, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is qadir mutlaq. So one thing I would like to just share with viewers of Madani Shal, when it comes to uh, the sight uh, granting vision, Right, granting powers and by Allah tabarak wa ta'ala who is Qadir Mutlaq. So we can see that even to certain animals, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala has granted a unique vision. When you see, uh, the science tells us that goats and sheep, it would be something uh, unique information for few views of Madani Shal, that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala has granted them such unique vision to goats and sheep that Give them an amazing 330 degree field of vision. They can see. Allah Akbar. And meaning they can see almost everything that isn't directly behind them. As you can imagine, this makes it extremely difficult for any predator to sneak up on them. Right? So this is what is the power even granted to the animals. And if you talk about chameleons, these are another uh, animals. Verbitrates. Now, one of the only animals with a wide range of vision than sheep and goats is the chameleon. Right? Chameleon's eyes can uh, see far enough to give them the full 360 degree of vision, almost 360 degree of vision. Beyond that, each and every of the chameleon's eyes can operate independently of the other. Allahu Akbar. So, this is the power of Allah wa ta'ala. No, we can see here. Now, over here, uh, my question would be that I'm not a science person. How is this possible? I don't see 360. How can these animals see 360? Yeah. But science is proving it. Similarly, I mean, beautiful point you've brought forward here that the uh, mechanism of plants in living like is completely opposite to us. Something that is harmful for us, they inhale it. 
and what is harmful to them, we inhale it. This is the process of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the powers that Allah Almighty gives to whomever He wills to. But if we, if we have got a little bit of understanding, if we see around the nature, we can find out the qudrat of Allah tabarak. Indeed. Powers of Allah tabarak. Before questioning on the power of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, if we see around, we can see, subhanAllah, the signs of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. But there is no comparison whatsoever with the sight of Mustafa Karim alayhi salatu wa salam. This is just an understanding. And this example which we have given, that is to relate with the powers of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. It's Qudra. It this also is gives us the mindset that something if we cannot comprehend it, yeah. it doesn't mean that we deny it. Yeah, it means, doesn't exist. It yeah. means that our intellect is not vast enough to comprehend it. As simple as that, we have to accept this fact. Like just as you were mentioning the scientific facts, I didn't know that. Now just because I didn't know that, it doesn't mean that it doesn't, mean it doesn't exist. exist. So if science is telling us that, that is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. And when we talk about the Holy Prophet the beloved of Allah, for whom each and everything was made, for whom stars, moon, Mashallah. sun, angels, these animals, us, you, everything was created for the sake of Mustafa. What sight would Allah wa ta'ala have granted to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Even we cannot even understand that. Respect to of Mother Nishan, now it's the time to include one segment in our program. We'll come back inshallah. We will talk further about sight of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ya Mustafa the chosen one sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ya Mustafa the chosen one Respect viewers of Madhuri Shani Today inshallah we will be talking about wearing shoes Sunnah of Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam in this regard. The beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has stated when anyone of you wears shoes, he should start from the right side. And when he takes them off, he should start from the left side so that the right foot could be first when wearing and last when taking off. So this is the beautiful sunnah of Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Insha'Allah azawajal, we should make intention to act upon and practice. Wasim al-Basman, before going to the segment, we're talking about sight of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, beautiful hadith from Muslim Sharif. We presented one hadith from Bukhari Sharif, one of the most authentic books of hadith. What else would you like to share? Alhamdulillah, the scholar of hadith, Shaykh Abdul Haq Muhaddith Adelbi rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. He mentions a beautiful point over here. He states that all six directions, meaning left, right, front, so back, right. top, and down, all these directions come under the ruling of one direction for the Prophet. So, so all these directions, which are possible for a person to have, which are these six directions, all these come under the ruling of one single direction of the Prophet So the Holy Prophet witnesses, sees all those six directions um, in one direction at one time. So Subhan. everything, Subhan. whether left, right, uh, front, back, top, below, all that is, is witnessed, is seen by the Prophet at once. So all these six uh, directions are uh, under the rule of Allah only one Allah could observe everything, everything in all directions. directions. So all those six, time, at same time. Exactly, all those six directions had been uh, uh, had become only one direction for the Prophet And this distinction again had not been given to anyone else. This is the speciality of the Holy Prophet I think we should also mention that couplet Allah's attribution. With regards to the same point, but Rasim Abbas is made, he says, Shash jihad samte muqabil shabu roz ek hi hal. Shash jihad samte muqabil shabu roz ek hi hal. Dhoom wal najm me hai aap ki binai ki. Allah Hukka. Subhanallah. Rasim Abbas made Allah's attribution to Allah talking about all directions. And uh, the power of the sight of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. In this couplet, he also brings a beautiful reference of one najm. Right? And there is uh, a surah in Quran, one najm. Alhamdulillah. Uh, in um, Surah Najm, verse number 17, translation, the eye did not waver, nor did it exceed the limit. Meaning this refers to the um, time of beholding Allah, beholding Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ta when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa beheld Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that time 
the eye of the Prophet ﷺ did not waver, nor did it exceed the limit. And this uh, very verse is also the, um, the uh, also shows us the praise of the Prophet ﷺ, his, pow his powers, his abilities over here, the beautiful sight that the Holy Prophet ﷺ had, as the Holy Prophet ﷺ not only beheld Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he also absorbed those uh, the manifestation of those uh, visions in his eyes. And then Alhamdulillah, there's further detail into it, which inshallah we will um, uh, go into. But as you were mentioning the uh, summary of that uh, couplet of Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala So this is what he mentioned regarding this verse Subhan over here. Subhanallah. Wasim uh, al-Azbin is beautiful hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Alayhi wa Alihi wa Sallam in front of me. Uqba bin Amr radiallahu ta'ala and he narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once came out and offered the funeral prayer of uh, the martyrs of Uhud and proceeded to the pulpit and said, I shall be your predecessor and a witness on you. And I am really looking at my sacred fount now. Hawze Kawthar Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was standing there and he said, right now I'm looking at how they cause Allah was how they cause sacred ground now. And no doubt I've been given the keys of the treasures of the world. SubhanAllah. And another beautiful attribute of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, speciality, unique attribute which is mentioned here, that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is given the, the keys of treasures of the world. Further, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, by Allah, I'm not afraid that you will worship others along with Allah, but I'm afraid that you will envy and fight one another for worldly fortunes. Respectively, of Madinijan, in this beautiful hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, many points are clear. The one point which is clear about the uh, sight of Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is our topic. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is standing on earth. Okay. Uh, and after the funeral prayer of martyrs of Uhud, he says, I am seeing, seeing the sacred fountain, Allahu Akbar, now. This was the sight of Mustafa. Wasim al Masbai, fountain of Kafir. It exists in Jannah. Jannah. And how far is Jannah? Could you please elaborate on this? And then it will explain and tell us, and especially to the viewers of Madani channel, that what distance Rasulullah could see, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. Paradise is situated above the seven skies, the seven heavens, Allah. and under the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And um, on this, Sayyidina Anas bin Malik who was asked that where is paradise, to which he responded that paradise is above the heavens, above the skies, and under the arsh. And Mufti Ahmad Yar Khan Naimi rahmatullahi ta'ala, he has stated that this very instance that you were talking about, that the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he was standing in Madinat al Munawwara and he was seeing how the Kothar, the fountain of Kothar, which is in paradise and which is um, above the seven skies, above the seven heavens. So, the one whose sight can see, can witness Jannah, can witness paradise, then for him to see everything on this earth and every one of uh, on this earth is not Subhanallah. something bigger than that Allah. as in the hadith the prophet alayhi salatu islam is talking about witnessing something which is above the heavens above the seven skies which millions of miles away per perhaps the uh, the, the units of measurements would also go beyond our understanding Allah. but this earth which can uh, somehow be come under the uh, come under the measurement of units what is this earth in front of the Prophet and he can witness Hawza Kothar by standing in Madinat al Munawwara. So what is this earth in front of him? Subhanallah, Subhanallah. So from earth, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was able to see the Jannah. He was able to see the Hawza Kothar, Allahu Akbar. And this is mentioned in hadith of Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam. Many respective views of Madani Shan, this tells us the far-sightedness of Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa Respecting Yusuf Madanishan, another important point which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam mentioned in that very hadith, that is also something notable. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said that I'm not afraid that you will worship others along with Allah, but I'm afraid that you will envy and fight one another for worldly fortunes. So, 
the fear of shirk was it was denied here the other prophets when they departed from this mortal world then their nations they started doing shirk again but rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said i do not have that fear that you will involve in shirk again this is also we can take it as a glad tiding but at the same time as a warning as well that we've been given the glad tiding of staying safe from shirk but at the same time there's a warning for us as well that we are, we will fall into envy into jealousy and we need to keep the harms of jealousy before us to ensure that um, it doesn't destroy our iman so at the same time as there's a glad tiding for us it is also a warning for us so we should we should keep a balance between uh, rejoicing over the glad tiding but also have the fear over the warning that has been given to us now it's the time to include one segment in our program that is regarding the chosen facts let's go towards that segment sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya mustafa the chosen one sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya mustafa the chosen one the second views of madinah the very first chosen fact what we've got for you that is can a person go to perform umrah with his step mother the answer is yes he can go because his step mother is mahram and she does not need to observe parda from her step son so this is the answer of the first chosen fact and the second one we've got for you that is why was sayyidina fatima radiyallahu ta'ala anha named fatima the beloved prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam has said my daughter fatima has been named fatima because allah azza wa jal has freed her and those having devotion to her from hell subhanallah the third one we got is did imam hasan radiyallahu anhu resemble the beloved prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam answer is sayyidina anas bin malik radiyallahu ta'ala an has narrated no one resembled the beloved prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam more than sayyidina hasan radiyallahu ta'ala an sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi sahbihi wa barik wa sallam respect me was of condition before going to our segment we were talking about the site of mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam Rasim Abbasbi, what else would you like to share with viewers of Madinah when we talk about the site of Mustafa alayhi salatu wassalam? MashaAllah, the site of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was such a site that if he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted, then everything from Arshay Mu'alla to, to Tahta Fathara, everything between there would come before the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam. It would become apparent. Nothing was hidden from the site of the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam. There was nothing uh, which the, the site of the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam had limitation to. So anything from Arshay Mu'alla to Tahta Fathara, if Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam wanted, that would come before the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam. And the Holy Quran is a witness upon the fact that when Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wassalam wanted to behold Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he asked, Rabbi Yarini, that, O Allah Almighty, O my Lord, I want to behold you, I, I, I want to behold your vision. Then what did Allah Almighty do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifested the divine ray of his refulgence upon Mount Sinai, upon Kohitur. And as a result of it, what happened? Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, he fell unconscious. And he remained unconscious for 40 days. And when he gained consciousness, then because of the reflection of that divine ray of refulgence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, that was manifested upon him through Mount Sinai, through Kohitur, what was its effect? After 40 days when he regained his consciousness, his eyesight became so strong that he والسلام, would be able to see a black ant on a black rock 30, uh, 30 miles away whilst he was standing wherever he would be. So this was the state of his eyesight just by the virtue of that ray of refulgence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 30 miles away, a black ant walking on a black stone, he will, a black rock, he'll be able to see it. 
This was the state of his sight. That's how powerful it became. Just because of the virtue of one ray of refulgence that was manifested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now let's come to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam. Over there, it was Lantarani. You cannot see. And upon con con uh, uh, constant insistence, when one ray of refulgence is manifested upon Mount Sinai and then reflected to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wa sallam, he falls unconscious. And he gains, uh, when he gains consciousness, his sight becomes so strong. But the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, he was called by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the honor of beholding himself. The Holy Prophet alayhi salatu was salam not only beheld Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but his sight absorbed the blessings of those uh, refulgences, of those rules of refulgence in his blessed sight. And upon this, the verse of the Quran that we presented before, مَا زَاغَ الْبَصَرُ وَمَا تَغَى Meaning the eye did not waver, nor did it exceed the limit. So, whilst he was beholding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his sight did not go right or left, up or down. It was constantly beholding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It did not exceed the limit, the limit of respect, the limit of reverence. So this also is the praise of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and at the same time also shows us the power of the sight of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon him. Subhan. So if Musa alayhi salatu wasalam's eyesight became so powerful, Allah. just by the virtue of one ray of refulgence of Allah subhanahu being manifested upon him through a mountain. Subhan. Then imagine the power of the sight of the Prophet والسلام, that beheld Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly without any hijab, without any veil. Subhan. And the eyesight did not go here or there, constantly beheld Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this has also been Subhan. told to us by Holy Prophet والسلام, in a hadith where Holy Prophet has said, and this has been mentioned in Tirmidhi Sharif, he says that I beheld Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a beautiful form as it is according to his grandeur, his majesty. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed his hand of Qudrat, blessed hand of Qudrat between both my shoulders and I felt the, the coldness, the coldness of the blessings of the hand of um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the hand of Qudrat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in my chest. And after this, Everything became apparent in, uh, in front of me. And another hadith, again in Tirmidhi Sharif, which has been narrated uh, on the authority of Ibn Abbas, عنهما, the words in that hadith are, is that, uh, so after this, everything, I came to know of everything in the earth and the heavens. So the Holy Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, the power of his sight is beyond our imagination, as the sight that can behold Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that can absorb the blessings of the uh, manifestation of that refulgence, of that light in his eyes. And then he himself is saying that I felt the, cold, the coldness of the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which when Allah Almighty placed his hand between my shoulders, the hand of Qudra, and I beheld Allah Almighty in a beautiful form as it is uh, for his majesty. Holy Prophet والسلام, is explaining how he saw Allah Almighty and what he felt after that then we can imagine the extent, the power of the sight of the Prophet ﷺ. And this honor of beholding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not been given to anyone else in this dunya before the day of judgment. In the state of wakefulness, no one else has been given this honor which has been given to the Holy Prophet ﷺ. Beholding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the state of wakefulness. Sayyidina so Musa a.s. is also one of the most um, highly acclaimed prophets, highly ranked prophets. He is amongst Anbiya Ulul Azm. He was Kalimullah, very beloved prophet, but he could not bear the manifestation of one ray of refulgence that was reflected upon him through a mountain. But when it comes to the Prophet a.s. Kisko dekha, ye Musa se puche koi, aankh walo ki himmat pe lakhon salam. Prophet a.s. not only beholds Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but his blessed eyesight does not waver here nor there. And it does not exceed the, the, the boundaries of respect either. So what else is there left to be said when that sight beheld Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that no one else can do so before the Day of Judgment. Allah, mashallah, beautiful, subhanAllah, respected views of Madani Shail. We were learning about the sight of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim. And uh, he summarized, Masim Bhai, about the event of Miharaj. Uh, respected views of Madani Shail, here, Allah Azad rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi has written a complete uh, 
which is a summary of what he has just talked about tabarak allah shan teri tujhi ko zaiba hai be niyazi tabarak allah shan teri tujhi ko zaiba hai be niyazi kahin to wo josh lan tarani kahin takaze visal ke the may allah tabarak wa taala give us understanding now it's a time to close one segment and inshallah we'll come back after that that is the chosen message let's go towards Ah, second. Sallu ala al-Habib. Sallu Allahu Taala ala Muhammad. Sallu Allahu alaihi wasallam. Ya Mustafa, the chosen one. Sallu Allahu alaihi wasallam. Ya Mustafa, the chosen one. Very briefly, I'm going to talk about that individual who is the most worried and grieved member of household, especially nowadays. Well, this is my perception about the most grieved and worried individual in our families. That is father. In this current lockdown, I think the most worried individual would be father. And why would he be worried? Because of his family. He would be concerned only for his family. Whether he is a daily wage worker, businessman, servant, rich or poor person. His children wouldn't be that much worried. In fact, I don't think so. Any other family member would be more worried or concerned than him. And his main concern would be, how would he provide for his family? He won't be thinking more about him. If wife cooks something at home, then definitely that all that grocery stuff comes through some sort of means. One earns income through various means, and all the bills are paid through income, aren't they? And as far as fulfilling the financial needs of the family is concerned, that is mostly done by a father, head of the family. That's what happens generally. Father thinks about the family. How will he provide? How will he meet all the expenses? Those they are poor, they think about tomorrow's food. So father is that personality who is worried about us today. He is worried and desperate when this lockdown will finish and he will go out to earn and bring money for their children, for their family, for household. As Ramadan has arrived, his worries would be how will he manage groceries? Eid is fast approaching, and how to manage all those expenses about Eid? The other family members would be waiting for this lockdown to finish because they might have to go to schools, colleges, outing. This is father who has to go out for work to earn money for us. This person could be father, husband, grandfather, or brother. But generally, this is the personality of a father who looks after family, especially when it comes to meet financial needs of a household. Honestly speaking, in this lockdown, the most worried and grieved personality is the personality of a father who's got worries about his children, worries about his job. Yes, another big tension he would be facing is the fact after lockdown, his job will be protected or not. So, end of the day, he's thinking about his family. his household has children so dear respected viewers of mother nature try to understand the example of a father is just like a tree a tree full of leaves which bears a scorching heat but provides shadow to the people underneath dear viewers let's say together thank you to your father say at least once dear dad to your father thank you so much you have been always there for us jazakallahu khairan Thank you so much. We won't leave you alone. We are with you. Don't worry. Everything will be sorted. Inshallah. Tell your dad, your father, you are with us, and Alhamdulillah, we are with you. We are one unit, one family, and we'll deal this problem together. We should say thank you to our father. Yes, respect views of Madam Michelle. Beautiful message. May Allah Taala give us ability to understand and act upon. as advised we are talking about the sayyid of mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam there is a beautiful hadith of sahih muslim hadith number 7 to 5 8 before me i would like to just share with you and part of that hadith of rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is allah drew the ends of the world near one another for my sake and i have seen its eastern and western ends Subhanallah subhanallah respect you of madam khair this is the site of mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam that allah tabarak wa taala beloved prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallama 
uh, sees this world that everything has been presented before Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam. Imam of Ahli Sunnah also talks about the sight of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. But by, there is one hadith of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that, which mentions the fact that Allah wa ta'ala presented this world before Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Would you like to mention that please? SubhanAllah, beautiful hadith uh, towards which you've just... Um, drawn our attention towards Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anh, has stated that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed this world before me Subhan in front of me Subhan so whatever is happening in this world and whatever is going to happen until the day of judgment I am witnessing it the way I am witnessing my palm I'm seeing my hand, Allah. the way I am seeing my hand so this was the greatness the power of the sight of the Prophet والسلام, that was specially bestowed upon him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything was placed before him. So whatever is currently happening, whatever has happened, whatever will happen, everything is in front of so the Holy after Prophet. After mentioning this beautiful hadith of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is also one saying of Imam of Ali sunnah Asha Imam Ahmad al-Zakhan, Ali Rahmat al-Rahman, Allah Akbar. He, Ali Rahmat says, Rahmat alam merciful Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, uh, subhanallah before him this world it is before him in such a way the way we can see a palm okay rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is witnessing seeing that in front of him allah akbar whatever is in this dunya and whatever will happen until the day of judgment subhanallah rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is seeing that those affairs before him just like you see your palm and further uh, it is mentioned in the skies on earth all earth's skies and earth there is not a single particle which is hidden from the sight of Mustafa so, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallama and subhanallah how beautiful he writes in Urdu couplet Rubaru misle kafe dast hai dono alam Rubaru misle kafe dast hai dono alam kaisi pur noor hai chashman rasool arabi that's what is translated what I've already explained to you subhanallah respect viewers of Madani Shani Sight of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is not like our sight. It is not a noble sight. It is unique. It is beautiful. It is extraordinary. There is, there is no word to be honest with you to explain the powerful sight of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam because he is that personality who is beloved of Allah wa ta'ala and the sight he possesses is that sight which beheld Allah tabarak wa ta'ala in the night of Mi'raj subhanallah. Jee Wasim bhai, what else would you like to share? Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma regarding the sight of the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam states that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi sallam would see in the darkness of the night as he would see in the light of the day. So the, the companions alayhi wa ridwan they also, uh, they witnessed this power of the Holy Prophet They also knew that the Prophet is not any, any ordinary personality. Even this, we're talking about just the sight of the Prophet. We're not talking about the other powers which were given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just the sight of the Prophet. Allah. We can imagine that the companions, this was their belief. Their, their belief that the, that the Prophet is not like us. Because the powers that were given to the Prophet والسلام, that power was not given to the Sahaba, to the companions. And they knew this. And they knew that the Prophet والسلام, is not like them. That's why Zainab Abbas is saying over here that the way Prophet والسلام, would see in, uh, during the daylight, similarly he would also be able to see during the darkness of the night. And there's one way for us to behold anything, see anything, there are two conditions for our sight to see something. Number one is light as we can't see anything in the dark. And number two, that thing should be in front of us. Like behind me, I can't, I can't see at the moment. Behind you, you can't see at the moment. And if all the lights are turned off, we can't see in the darkness. These are two fundamental conditions for the sight of a human to behold something, to see something. For normal human For, a, for normal, normal human being. But these conditions do not apply to the Prophet ﷺ. Dark, whether it is dark, whether it's day, whether it is night, whether it is in front of him, whether it is behind him, 
Nothing matters for the Prophet in this <laughs> These conditions are for normal human beings. But when the Prophet is the chosen one, is the most beloved creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then his sight is also the chosen sight. Subhan. It is also the most superior sight amongst the entire creation. No doubt, no doubt. Respect to of Man and Shane, now it's time to include one segment in our program. That is chosen wazaif. Let's go towards that. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Mustafa, the chosen one, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Mustafa, the chosen one. Respecting those of Madanishan, the very first wazifa we've got for you, that is Ya Ghaffaru, Ya Ghaffaru. Whoever recites this word at all times will insha'Allah Azza wa Jal be relieved from the evil desires of nafs. And the second wazifa we've got for you is Ya Qahharu. Ya Qahharu. Invoke this word 100 times if an affliction befalls. Insha'Allah Azza wa Jal, the affliction will be removed. Insha'Allah Azza wa Jal. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam. Respecting the people of Madhani Shal, we are talking about sight of Mustafa Kareem alayhi salatu wa salam. There is one hadith in Sunan Ibn Majah, volume 5, book of Zuhd, hadith 4190. And the initial part of that beautiful hadith is, it says, Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, has been reported to have said, I see what you do not see. What Rasulullah is saying, I see what you do not see, and I hear what you do not hear. Respect views of Madhani Shain, this tells us that the sight of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, power of seeing of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wa salam, and hearing power of Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam is not like a normal human being. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can see what we cannot see. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can hear what we cannot hear. Yes, my dear, respect views of Madhani Shain, for Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, everything was crystal clear. Aqa alayhi salatu wa salam, was on earth and could see the heaven. He could see how the Kafir, Sayyidina Jibra'il ala Nabiina wa alayhi salatu wa salam had visited Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thousands of times in the court of Mustafa Kareem alayhi salatu wa salam. Normal people around Rasulullah alayhi salatu wa salam wouldn't be able to see Sayyidina Jibra'il ameen alayhi salam. But it was Mustafa Kareem alayhi salatu wa salam sight that he could see. He could see the angel Jibra'il, not only the normal angel, but the, the chief of all the angels, Sayyidina Jibra'il, Amin alayhi salatu was salam. This was the sight of Mustafa Kareem alayhi salatu was salam. The sight of Mustafa Kareem alayhi salatu was salam is once he was walking with Sahabi Rasul and what was going underneath the grave, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam witnessed that there was punishment going on. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew he had knowledge that what was the reason that person was being punished. Rasulullah even told that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's eyes, they saw what was going on inside the earth, inside the grave. This was the sight of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And the knowledge he was granted that he knew what was the reason why that person was being punished. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam's sight is that when in the night of Mi'raj, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam travels towards the skies and heavens and towards the la makam Allahu Akbar respect the views of Madhani Shail in dark we cannot see Allahu Akbar Sayyidina Jibra'il Ameen alayhi salam escorted Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until Sidratul Muntaha and after that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam traveled alone and today we think that in darkness we cannot see this was the sight of Mustafa this was the knowledge of Mustafa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Travel to Lamakan. It was the sight of Mustafa. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam beheld Allah wa ta'ala. 
This is the site of Mustafa Kareem alayhi salatu was salam. May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala give us true understanding to understand the unique attributes, khasais of Mustafa Kareem alayhi salatu was salam, specialities granted to Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, miracles granted to Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We cannot understand the haqiqah of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, reality of Mustafa Kareem alayhi salatu was salam, let alone who are we to understand. Sahaba Kiram did not understand the reality of Mustafa. Only Allah wa ta'ala knows the true reality of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Khuda ki azmati kya hai Muhammad Mustafa jane. Maqam Mustafa kya hai Muhammad ka khuda jane. What is the real, real maqam status of Mustafa? Only Allah wa ta'ala knows and the Azmat of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only known by Mustafa Kareem alayhi salatu wa tasneem. May Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala give us ability to understand the maqam of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. When I say may Allah give us ability to understand, we can't understand, but we need to have respect and reverence for the great status of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Few more minutes, Basim Abbas Bhai. What would you like to share and what message would you like to give to viewers of my religion? SubhanAllah. Sight of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi Such a sight that everyone on the Day of Judgment will be yearning for it to fall upon them. The fortunate person upon whom the sight of the Prophet would fall. The fortunate one who will be blessed with the sight of the Prophet to have fallen upon him, he will be successful. That is that blessed sight that will make those grieved people on the Day of Judgment successful. So we should, we should have that yearning from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be blessed with this honor on the Day of Judgment to have that blessed sight of the Holy Prophet fall upon us. And how would we attain that? By loving the Prophet, by honoring him in true sense, by following his sunnahs, by following his footsteps, by following his commandments. This would inshallah enable us to be blessed with that blessed sight on the Day of Judgment. The beloved Prophet is merciful Prophet. Inshallah, he won't let us sinners suffer on the Day of Judgment. However, we need to make efforts for it and that would be by abstaining from sins and following his sunnahs. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. Speak to of my name, Beautiful message what is shared by the Wali of Dawah Islami, Muslim Bhai, that we should also have that yearning, that one sight of Mustafa alayhi salatu was salam that falls upon us. Sin is like us. And inshallah, Zawadil will all be sorted in this world and be here after, inshallah. And especially, we should make this dua in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Ya Allah, when on the day of judgment we are able to have Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam's misery, karam, the blessed eyesight shall also befall us. May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala accept this dua. Ameen, Rijahim Nabil, Ameen, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam. Respect the views of my mission. Another important uh, message I would like to just give across when we are talking about the sight of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim that we need to follow Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam as sunnahs. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam as beautiful eyes they used to remain uh, lowered this it was another a beautiful attribute of Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And if we want the blessings of sight of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, inshaAllah we should also follow the beautiful sunnahs of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam in terms of protecting our eyes from haram. And if you want to have that beautiful vision of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, what we should do is to protect our eyes from haram, inshallah, inshallah, a time will come when, inshallah, we will also behold Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam. And I think in this day and age, one of the beautiful ways to follow beautiful sunnahs of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is 
to attach yourself with this beautiful atmosphere of Dawati Islam. Keep watching Madani channel. That's all for today. We'll be back next week, same time, same channel. Ya Mustafa, the chosen one, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Mustafa, the chosen one, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.